This is ABC 15 Mornings. Wildfire Watch. One lane roads, they're dirt roads. Um, you know, they're very narrow. Some communities in Arizona under evacuation orders. The mandate is over. I think it's for our own protection because obviously COVID is still going around. I think people are just so tired of wearing masks. Wearing a mask no longer in effect at the federal level. From the cubicle to the construction site. Being in the office, I didn't really enjoy. Women beginning to build and break barriers. Check your makeup bag. Expiration dates are really important to keep in mind when it comes to makeup. From mascara to lipstick, we're talking about about a shelf life. And on that note, we say good morning to you. We're going to take a look at your forecast here momentarily and your morning ride, but we do want to get right to this breaking news. A fast moving fire forcing a dozen people out of their home. Let's get right out to Jamie Warren live near University and Mesa Drive. Uh, Jamie, you just got closer to that apartment complex. What kind of damage are you seeing? So Nick and Kaylee, now that the sun is starting to come up, we are starting to see a little bit more of this damage. It is pretty devastating to look at. You'll see behind us uh, this entire unit pretty much destroyed. If we start on the ground, you'll notice a lot of these vehicles are absolutely charred. We're told those flames may have started on one of these cars and then those flames shot up to the third floor of one of these apartment units. So eventually that roof ended up collapsing, uh, caving in. The good news is everyone was already out of the apartment unit by the time that happened. So, but it wasn't very chaotic scene. I mean, when our crew first arrived, we saw flames just shooting out of this apartment unit. This fire actually started just before two o'clock this morning and we did have the chance to speak with with some of the people who live in this unit. They described what they saw and what was going on as they had to really rush to safety. Take a listen. And all of a sudden I heard somebody say, yo, it's on fire. So I hopped up, went downstairs, opened the door, turned to my right and up in flames. So I went back in, woke up my mom, came back outside. So in total, 12 people have now been displaced because of this fire. I am told that the Red Cross is here. They are working with these families and trying to provide them assistance as they now look for a place to live for the time being. Also, the cause of this fire is still under investigation, so we'll update you as we learn more. But for now, reporting live in Mesa, Jamie Warren, ABC 15, Arizona. Yeah, the worst possible wake up call. Can't even imagine in the overnight hours trying to grab what you can to get out of there safely. Jamie, thank you for your hustle on the story. Meantime, firefighters in Yavapai County battling a wildfire burning 11 miles south of Prescott. And this one has been dubbed the Crooks Fire. We did check with latest figures this morning, and that fire does remain at 500 acres. No containment on this one. And some smaller communities have been told to get out. More resources are going in today, including some air support, order to help the crews and the conditions in that part of our state. They're dry. The flames are burning in a remote area. Incident Command telling us if the weather is not too extreme here over the next few weeks, they hope to have full containment by Wednesday, but that would be Wednesday, May 4th. Okay, so more than two weeks away. Of course, we know high fire danger for the area today. Meteorologist Iris Hermosillo joining us right now with that most accurate forecast and you're tracking that red flag warning. Of course, we know not good news for those fire crews. Not at all. So I'm watching conditions in that area, of course, specifically because we've already got a fire burning there, but really across Arizona, that wildfire risk is going on right now. Conditions there in the upper 50s temperature wise winds are calm at about three miles an hour so very light winds at this point that's going to change as the day goes on this area under a fire weather warning wind gusts by this afternoon could be as high as 40 miles an hour around the Prescott area up in northern Arizona though gusts could be as high as 55 miles an hour and for the valley it's going to get windy too with gusts as high as 35 miles an hour this afternoon so essentially we've got a combination of very strong winds today across the state, combining with very low relative humidity that will be down below 15% across Arizona, and that's increasing that fire risk across the state. So red flag warnings posted for where that fire is burning and across the rest of Arizona too. the exception being the muggy on rim. But all in all, this means that the fire conditions are high and dangerous, and so you've got to use extreme caution today as it's not going to take much for one to start wildfires, but for two to wildfires to spread 
spread very easily. So again, can't stress enough the importance of using caution today. Temperatures in the upper 60s right now. Today, very warm too, up to 98 degrees. I'm going to take you through that hour by hour forecast in just minutes. Megan Thompson, though, helping us with that morning commute and all the updates on the roads. Hey, Megan. Hey, it's been busy out there this morning, Iris, as people get going here on this Tuesday morning, getting a check sponsored by Accident Law Group. Let me take you outside live with our ADOT cameras to see the current conditions. I-10 eastbound near 7th Avenue. We see some of this traffic here inching along. That's because we had a crash that was blocking some of those travel lanes and it's had that residual backup building. Now they have been able to get it off of those travel lanes, but that backup remains like I mentioned with your speeds dropping towards the mini stack to about 20 miles per hour. We also had a crash on the I-10 eastbound near 32nd Street where we see right along the Salt River Bridge. Those speeds are dropping below 20 miles per hour. So here's your desert drive times in both those spots as those crashes have cleared. I-10 eastbound from the 303 to the mini stack. That's close to 40 minutes and the I-17 southbound from the stack to the split. That's checking in right around 15 minutes. We'll get you a check of traffic predictor coming up in just moments. Let's get to more of our top stories this morning. We're working to get more information from Peoria police on a double shooting. Officers tell us two people were shot at an apartment complex near 83rd Avenue and all of both have life threatening injuries. Investigators haven't said what led up to this, but we're told that they are not looking for any suspects. Today, Lori Vallow Daybell set to appear in court for the murders of her two children, JJ and Ty Lee. Daybell was deemed competent to stand trial last week. Her husband, Chad, also facing charges in the deaths of her two children. They were first reported missing in 2019 after moving from the valley to Idaho. The Daybell's joint trial is expected to get underway next January. Materials for construction projects should be American made. That's according to new guidance from the Biden administration. This is for any project, bridge, broadband, what have you, funded by the infrastructure package. Waivers could be issued if American manufacturers can't keep up with demand, though, or if it would raise the cost of the project by more than 25 percent. Well, it's hard not to notice all of the construction here in the valley and really across the state from building homes to roadways. There really is a need for workers to get everything done by the end of the year. In fact, we're talking the possibility of 155,000 job openings. But ABC 15's Justin Bezerra is about to show us one demographic that's missing, and that's women. This is Leona Charlie, a commercial electrician with Canyon State Electric, working on a large construction site in North Scottsdale. She's part of a growing number of women choosing construction as a career. Right now we're up on the sixth floor. Her typical day on the job now much different than it was several years ago. Leona grew up on the Navajo Nation. After high school, she got an office job doing clerical work along with providing customer service. She did the office life for a while but it wasn't cutting it. Being in the office, I didn't really enjoy. Leona's uncle is an electrician. He encouraged her to change careers and get into construction. Although women make up 47% of the entire workforce in the United States, just under 11% work in construction and only 1% work on the front lines. You're constantly walking around doing something. You're always busy. The numbers are changing. An estimated 13% of construction firms in the country are owned by women. That's a 94% jump from 2007. Here in Arizona, there's opportunity to get into the biz. Build Your Future Arizona estimates there's 10,000 unfilled construction jobs right now. For Leona, resetting her life and changing careers has been worth it. She's found a job that's truly fulfilled. In Scottsdale, Justin Pizarra, ABC 15, Arizona. While women working in construction make about 96 cents for every dollar made by men in the industry, it's actually higher than normal. And if you would like to get into the business, maybe you just want more information, we posted it for you in a link. It's up right now at abc15.com. 608, it's time to rally the Valley tonight. Phoenix Suns fans will be flocking to Footprint Center once again for game two of the first round of the NBA playoffs. We feel the vibe. It's alive. Our Suns taking on New Orleans in round one. We're hoping to see another big win here at home. Tip off happens at seven. And tickets are still available, but they ain't cheap. You can also head to the Rally Beach section and cheer on the Suns from the outside for 15 bucks. ABC 15 is your home for the NBA Finals and we will have live team coverage at the arena tonight. Sometimes it's just fun to get out and celebrate with others feeling the same way you do. Up next here on ABC 15 Mornings, moving from a mandate to a choice. 
From planes to other forms of public transportation, masks are now optional. Plus, attempted border crossings are on the rise. A month before Title 42 is set to come to an end. In less than five minutes, we go live to Washington to see what the government is doing to prepare. And 609, let's take you out to the East Valley as the ABC 15 Live Drive is on the Loop 101 southbound, the Price Freeway passing Elliott Road right now. This spot in the East Valley looks great, but I did just catch the scene of a crash on the US 60 westbound. I'll take you there and tell you where it is coming up. Six twelve. We want to catch you up here on some of your morning headlines. The federal mask mandate, a big talker this morning when it comes to public transportation. It's no longer in effect, struck down by a federal judge. For you, it means airlines and other forms of transit. The systems can make their own decisions about masking app requirements. The CDC is still recommending you wear a mask on public transportation. Well, a storm is expected to make things feel a lot more like winter than spring in the Northeast today. Some areas are expected to get up to two feet of snow. The National Weather Service says this will lead to treacherous travel conditions for up to 8 million people. Well, NASA's moon rocket facing even more delays. It needs a valve and fuel leak repair. That's actually what prevented its stress rehearsal earlier this month. NASA says it may not be ready to launch until June. And Instagram expanding product uh, tagging. You've seen this for all users in the US. Anyone with a public account can now tag products in their posts and anyone who taps on it can buy them directly. Instagram says the idea is to help people support small businesses. 614 on this Tuesday from the border to the upcoming midterm elections. There's a lot of debate happening right now in Washington and here in Arizona. So let's bring in our chief political correspondent Joe St. George live in DC for us. Joe, let's start with Title 42. It's expected to end in just a matter of weeks. That's the COVID related restriction on people seeking asylum. But new data shows the highest number of arrests at the border in two decades. So is there a chance Title 42 actually stays put? I think that there is going to be increased debate uh, over the coming uh, weeks. Uh, that is uh, for sure. May 23rd is still a long way away in American politics. And Senator Kelly, Senator Sinema, other top Democrats are beginning to recruit even more Democratic senators to say, wait a minute, maybe we should have a more prudent approach as a country. One name, Senator Gary Peters of Michigan, just said, I think the president needs to rethink this. Michigan's far, far away from, from the border. On this hot topic, though, Nick, I think it's important to stick with some of the facts and the figures. 1.6 million, that's the number of uh, migrants that were turned away because of Title 42 within the last uh, year. In theory, they, they will be able to come back, reapply, try to regain entry to the U.S. Uh, after May 23rd. The Department of Homeland Security, as you know this, you know this well, Nick, uh, they're preparing for this. They're admitting that there will be a spike. They're, remote, they're mobilizing staff uh, to the southern border. They're getting ground and air transportation uh, ready so that if one section of the border, let's say, in Arizona gets overwhelmed, they could send migrants to Texas, for instance, maybe an area that isn't seeing uh, certain numbers. But I do think that this is going to be a moving football. Uh, it's, a, it's a hot topic in Washington. And certainly not only are Republicans uh, raising concerns about this, a number of influential Democrats are as well. Yeah, because you mentioned, of course, Senator Sinema, Senator Kelly behind that bipartisan push to delay this. I want to get to the race for Senate. Yeah. Speaking of Senator Mark Kelly, of course, he's up for re-election this fall. You have some brand new numbers showing this is going to be a very clear close and expensive race. Yeah, it could be one of the most expensive races. I feel like this is deja vu, right? Uh, just a couple years ago, we were already talking about the most expensive race uh, in American history. It could be another record-breaking race uh, in Arizona. What does that mean for you at home? It means plenty of commercials when you're watching Nick Saletti in our morning show each and every morning. It's just a way of life. And, and living in Arizona, it's become such a critical state, uh, not just in presidential elections, but also in midterm elections. Why? 50-50. That's the Senate. President Biden was able to to confirm Judge Katanji Brown Jackson a few weeks ago because the Democrats had control, although by the narrowest of margins of the U.S. Senate. If just one seat, if Arizona's seat flips, Republicans could have control of the U.S. Senate, and that would certainly alter the course of President Biden's agenda going forward. The Republican Party have already reserved those commercials, Nick. Democrats have already reserved those commercials uh, as well. Uh, Arizona Senate race is going to be fascinating to watch. The reality is Arizona is a battleground, and it's going to be a battleground for the foreseeable future. Yeah, of course, we see how close our elections are, as you mentioned, in presidential years. 
and in midterm years as well. Our Joe St. George live in D.C. for us this morning. Let's go ahead and get a check of the roads this morning with Megan Thompson. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. And a traffic alert to tell you about at this hour. Time check for you, 617 as you head out the door. Traveling in the East Valley, this is the US 60 westbound near Higley Road, where we have the HOV lane, the left lane, and a third left lane or closer to the center lane is blocked. I do believe this is an undercover DPS trooper trying to make their way around. It has those flashing lights in the back. They're working to get this crash completely off the roadway. Just a few moments ago, they were also doing a traffic break in the area meaning they were closing off all of those travel lanes so they could tow the trucks involved off to the right hand side or vehicles involved off to the right hand side, which of course creates some of the backups that we're seeing here on our maps back towards about power road. If you're traveling through this area, your speeds will drop well below 10 miles per hour. Make sure you're moving to the right or if you're getting on to the US 60, I would suggest doing it after Higley to avoid this because we are seeing nice green conditions after you pass that scene right around 20 minutes is what we're looking at for a desert drive time from the 202 to the 10 typical slowing for us on the I 10 the I-17 and the I-10 eastbound as you're getting closer to the mini stack. Here's a crash 56th Street and Greenway and I'll leave you with a look of those desert drive times here. We're at 34 minutes on the 10 from the 303 to the mini stack. All right, time right now is 618. Let's talk about your most accurate forecast because a lot to break down today. First, as we look live towards downtown Phoenix, the sun is up. We've got some clouds out there. They're a little difficult to see from this view, but they are out there with partly cloudy skies in our forecast for today. These clouds increasing yesterday and they're sticking around through the day today, but we won't get any rain or snow. They're just moving across our skies as we track a disturbance that'll pass north of our state. Now, while we won't get any rain or snow, we are going to get some stronger winds right now. Winds are starting to pick up in some spots. Notice Flagstaff and Winslow. Those winds now topping 10 miles an hour. That's the case in Sholo too. Breezes at about 10 miles an hour officially at Phoenix Sky Harbor. But those winds will pick up throughout the day. And by this afternoon, it's going to be windy across Arizona. But especially in that northern pocket of our state, anywhere from Window Rock to Flagstaff over to Bullhead City. Breezy to windy across central and southern Arizona too. Here's a look at what 5 o'clock could look like. Again, wind sustained here in the valley close to 20 miles an hour. Our wind gusts here in the Phoenix area could go as high as 30 to 35 miles an hour. So windy today in the valley and in northern Arizona, very windy. Winds will be sustained out of the southwest between 20 and 35 miles an hour, but gusts could be as high as 50 to 55 miles an hour. So we officially have wind advisories for that entire northern pocket of our state. And as you look at that hour by hour breakdown for the valley, our strongest winds come this afternoon. Afternoon, but again, I expect those winds to pick up across northern Arizona throughout the morning and continue through the afternoon and evening. Temperature wise, a quick warm up and today is going to be warmer than it was yesterday. Yesterday we made it to 95. This morning we're starting out in the 60s across the valley, but we'll be right back into the 90s by as early as lunchtime. So get those outdoor activities done soon. Then this afternoon, very warm and windy with a high of 98 degrees, just two degrees shy of that triple digit mark this afternoon. So it's a combination of strong winds, very low humidity and high temps that are increasing that fire danger across our state. In fact, as you look at that future cast forecast, that fire is climbing into the high range across northern Arizona by the early afternoon. But also we're seeing more of that red across the central parts of our state. And that's why we've got red flag warnings or fire weather warnings covering most of the state today because of the strong winds and that increased risk for wildfires. Today windy, but it's going to stay breezy Wednesday and Thursday. Then we've got another round of strong winds on Friday. Still breezy Saturday before those winds start to back off. Now these winds are increasing as we track a series of disturbances to our north. For the valley, no rain, unfortunately, but we will get a drop in temperatures after a high of 98 today, low 90s Wednesday and Thursday. Then that Friday storm system even stronger. That one will bring a chance for showers up north and it'll drop valley highs into the low 80s Friday. I like the food in your fridge, the makeup in your bathroom can go bad. At 625, the dangers of using expired cosmetics. Plus, providing a safe space for kids. At 637, the importance of giving to make our community a better place. And at 645, her vacation canceled. She's still fighting for that dream trip to happen two years later. And she called our Let Joe Know team for help. 
While managing the mind, as you just heard, you do not want to miss our ABC 15 Health Insider special tomorrow. In every newscast, you're going to get resources to help with maybe things like stress or anxiety, along with the questions you should be asking a potential therapist. Again, our special reports air tomorrow starting at 4.30 a.m. It is time to spring clean your makeup bag. Toss out things that are maybe past their prime, but what if they don't come with an expiration date? Dermatologists are saying things like mascara and eyeliner need to be replaced after three months. This is after you open them. Liquid blush, concealers, or foundation, anything that's a pencil, they should be tossed out after a year. The lipstick and the glosses, they're good for up to two years. And expired products typically just don't work as well. They can also pack a lot of harmful bacteria. The downsides to those kinds of contaminations, which are generally things like skin infections, skin irritation, certainly eye infections, conjunctivitis, styes, those kinds of things can all arise from contaminated and or expired makeup. And the dermatologists also say if your makeup is maybe getting drier, don't add water or saliva because they say, I know, that just creates more bacteria. Well, if you're looking for a fun way to celebrate mom this Mother's Day, the Arizona Boardwalk has you covered. So they're actually offering $10 off admission at Odyssey Aquarium and $3 off tickets at the Butterfly Waterland. This is for Sunday, May 8th only, which does happen to be Mother's Day. You've only got a few weeks left to plan, right? Yeah, it's going to come up quick, too. It's not all. The Boardwalk is hosting Mom Palooza, and that means you can enjoy a chair massage, get a manicure, even a makeover, activities for the kids, too, and all kinds of giveaways. This family friendly outdoor event is free. Shout out to all the moms because you, you deserve it, right? You do too, Thank Kaylee. You. Next at 6 30, some of America's biggest and most important rivers are in trouble this morning. The one most at risk provides water to so many of us right here in the valley. And 12 people are displaced this morning after a fire rips through this Mesa apartment complex. We are giving you a closer look at the damage, plus hearing from those who had to rush to safety. And more than just a game, Fiesta Bowl Charities is getting ready to give away millions of dollars in grants to local nonprofits. Coming up ahead at 630, I'll be highlighting one here in the Valley that's helping kids.